Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your Cape Crusader Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our returning friend Brandon. We're here to break down Avalon issue number three and everything in between. Brandon, welcome back to the stream. How have you been? I've been good. Thanks for having me back. Dude, absolutely. Coming uh, fresh. The last time we talked, uh, we were talking about the Kickstarter for issue two, right in the middle of the campaign for issue three. How's everything been since you last been on, man? Uh, real good and real busy, you know, trying to actually <laughs> add, adding more people to the team and all that stuff to try and uh, hit those uh, those heights that we can hit with Avalon. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good material that we can uh, play with and all that stuff. And then adding more people and actually just added a new writer as well for season two as well. That's that's pretty exciting for us as well to kind of make sure all that dramatic and, you know, that mental health thing is going to be a big part of uh, issue two or season two. So doing all that stuff kind of uh hitting events where we can and all that stuff our last event we just came from scranton pa which is about five hour drive from where we're at so just kind of doing what we can to stay busy and staying creative and all that stuff going forward dude uh did you like visit the office i mean so you were like right in the area right <laughs> yeah no uh so it was funny because i was like looking it up and i always knew that obviously they didn't really film in scranton they for the most part they filmed in like a studio but uh but to kind of be where it was at i was a big fan of the show and all that stuff too and it, it was it was kind of like a cool experience to kind mm -hmm. of be like okay i went to scranton and, and all that stuff. but i didn't really <laughs> see anything office related it was it was mostly just business there trying to get to the the two-day comic-con that was down there so it was not a lot of time to kind of really sit there and like okay let's go let's go see what mm -hmm. some scenes from the office and all that but so I had the opportunity to read issue two and man, those last, uh, what the last page or two was in, in color. I love that. Is that yeah. something new that you're trying to do? Yeah, that's just, that's going to be our deal kind of moving forward with all of our issues. Uh, we're just going to hit that splash of color on the last page of every single issue. It's kind of like a, a cool thing that I thought was pretty unique and, uh, you know, kind of just to allow Demetrius kind of show his, uh, his mm -hmm. skill and all that too, because he does a really good job at the coloring and all that. And, um, and then we re I, the reason we kind of stuck with the black and white and blood for the one through 23 is obviously number one, it's cheaper, you know, and number two, I, I like the dramatic effect. It, it also brings anyways to have the black, white, and then that really show shines a light on the blood aspect yeah. of it really, you know, keeps I that think it, horror look. Yeah. Yeah. It really adds that level of suspense because, um, you know, it's, it's like a really like, <sighs> what's the word I'm looking for? In, uh contrasting view i guess like yeah, you're looking no, at black yeah. and white and then it's just like this very bright very sharp red and it's like whew, this is so good and we have the interiors right now from the kickstarter on an image slideshow next to us and i mean you could see even like when the whole page is black and white um and there's just this little hand that's covered in blood like it makes such an important like distinction i like i love it man I, I, I agree. And he does a, an awesome job with the blood there too, you know, cause I obviously I was a big fan of the walking dead comic books and they were black and white, but one thing that it, it just, my uh, thing, it kind of bothered, that didn't really bother me. It was just a little thing that was like a little annoying to me was just the blood wasn't like there. It was obviously just like the black or whatever, mm -hmm. the gray or whatever. So they didn't really illustrate the blood and the way that Avalon does, but I just think it definitely adds that impact and it definitely brings your eye to it as well. That it just, it's just a dramatic mental thing, I think. So uh, I think it was very important for Avalon to kind of hold that and really show that as well. So uh, the Av this was a really interesting read. Uh, we have people, they get infected, they get very mad. I mean, you seem very calm, yeah. so you must not be infected right now. <laughs> um, no, yeah. G give us a little bit about what the story is about. I mean, it is like right from the start, just full of like balls to the wall. Yeah, uh, what, one of the big things that we're really focusing on the story with Avalon is making the world the main character and really not focusing on a hero journey like a lot of you know comics or a lot of uh, things in this genre uh do it's really we're really trying to make this world the big the big picture here and mm -hmm. and one of these things and obviously you have to tell it through somebody's eyes so we're telling it through the eyes of the castle family and there's a lot of problems with that family that you learn pretty quick uh there's a fractured bond between the brothers and they have like these little things that you'll learn uh as issues come along as well where andy the the oldest brother isn't hasn't been around lately so and kind of really having all that stuff going on like real life problems and then on top of it now we're hitting them with an apocalypse so now you have to force that issue and force that uh bond and bringing them back together and trying to figure out those issues 
on top of trying to stay alive. And one of the one of the inspirations that really helped me with that was the movie Thirty Days of Night, mm -hmm. where it's just like obviously the the two main protagonists are, are uh, they they were a couple and they're trying to figure this out. So they get but they get stuck. They get forced to stay with each other, and then they're forced to survive. And then also like in in the background when there's small little areas to do it, they can hash things out a little bit but then right away you have to deal with what's right in front of you and that's trying to survive so Man, that was and that ending deal. was like so like, like that was damn, good yeah. right you know <laughs> yeah yeah it was one of those things that it i'm not a big cliffhanger guy i, I kind of it kind of bothers me so i didn't want every issue obviously needs some sort of cliffhanger or hook uh is kind of the word we're using for that is and we're trying to make it intense to bring you back for the next issue next issue but not intense enough to be like oh i gotta wait you know mm -hmm. so, so it's just enough to keep it interesting and that's what we kind of do with the last two issues and then obviously issue three that's going to be coming out here as well uh what we're we're real excited with what we got i think we're we came together and the team and uh and trying to figure out the best way to tell this first season and it was just trying to let it flush out and let it do its thing over the span of six issues and not really tell everything in one issue at a time so um but there's a lot there's a lot to unveil and and a lot to show with this first season and leading up into the next season uh coming uh, obviously way in the future from now but mm -hmm. there's a lot to be told and there's a lot of story uh to do with these characters that we've built from issue one on it feels like there's a lot of focus on like realism uh with this and uh though the way like the infection happens to kind of feels like a more realistic approach uh it, you know if, if if i may add um what was like some of your uh, influence for that um, so we wanted to, obviously the original idea was trying to stay away from the traditional zombie, but then uh, towards like, once we were going to like start producing it and all that stuff, I wanted to obviously hold some traditional values to the genre because I'm a big fan of the genre in itself. So, so we wanted to keep some, like some zombie ish things, but we wanted to make our own kind of zombie if, mm -hmm. uh, for the lack of a better term, really. Uh, so we wanted to do our own thing, make it scarier, uh, in our eyes, we wanted to make it more, uh, just different and a lot of different aspects and you're going to see the differences in these next few issues because well i mean that's honestly part of the story as well it's not just learning these characters and learning, learning their problems it's understanding this world and understanding this infection as well there's yeah. a lot of uh elements behind the scenes that you will slowly see and learn as issues go on and our infected people are a little bit different i would say actually more more so different than the traditional zombie uh, but just trying to grab that and show that we're in this genre. We wanted to just be like real basic with the infected issue one yeah. and two and show you what we're about. And then you'll learn the differences over time. And actually towards the end of this arc, this first volume, you'll start to question some things. And then some of those things are going to be answered in the second arc of this whole Ooh. thing. So there's just, there's a, there's a lot uh, of behind the scenes stuff that we're working on. That's going to be told yeah, actually in each issue going forward, but um that we, we, we wanted to make it real real uh alan and i were, we're both real people we like to hear what it is and just tell us what it is and all that stuff so we wanted to apply that in our project as well and to kind of keep the conversations real and grounded and all that stuff make them feel like real people make the world feel real and this infection we wanted to try and make it as real as we could in, in a fictional setting as possible so in the first uh it, like you know issue one issue two uh we get a good chance of kind of seeing what happens when people get infected and it seems like they gravitate towards like almost like trying to claw their eyes out it seems like such a violent infection i mean i i love it dude and it's um we were talking the black and white like this is right where that you know that red comes into play it just it gets so gory so quick man i i, I love it yeah and, and that's just the thing and 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 it's you're not gonna be able to illustrate it as much in a comic that you would be able to in a live action because the way we're thinking about it is so much more scary and gory too like if we were to show it in like a, a movie or a show or something like that like it would be a pretty intense transformation into this infected kind of being and all that stuff so uh but he, but the artist does illustrate it in such a good dramatic way though too mm -hmm. the, these people when they're clawing their face and clawing their eyes obviously it seems as, as if something is inside and really taking them over really right before that kind of transformation they're you know they're really going and digging deep inside themselves um so that we wanted to try and make that very scary and very dramatic and that i think the artist really uh shows that very well in this comic yeah yeah it's gorgeous it is, it is definitely gorgeous so give us a little bit about um, what's happened in issue two leading up to issue three and then what we'll do is we'll kind of uh after that pull up the kickstarter and uh take it from there 
Yeah, so with obviously issue two, it's a continuation right from issue one, uh, meeting the family and all that stuff. So we're, we're telling the story in issue two very similar than we to the way we were telling it in issue one with the split, you know, family and Andy mm-hmm. and Miller's story. Um, so we're kind of continuing that uh, structure. Uh, but you learn more and it's happening faster and you're starting to understand that, okay, that this is moving quick. This is not something that's yeah. a slow burn where this infection just like, okay, we're doing this, this and that. It's over the course of days, weeks, or months. It's, it's happening now. Um, so you learn that you learn what Andy and Miller have to deal with and the, the, the struggles that they have to figure out immediately. They don't have time to think about it. the family very similar as well. They're on a, they're about 45 minutes away from Andy and Miller's uh, section out of town, kind of out of the city. Um, but you could tell right away it's happening with them as well. So it's happening quick and all over the place right now. So, um, but all that stuff kind of lo- leads up to this big like bang at the end. So, and then it leads you into issue three uh, and issue three, we're doing a little bit different, you know, structure. And I've told people in the past as well. So we allowed issue one and two to breathe, tell both stories, kind of get you invested in these characters. Issue three, all you're focusing on is Miller and Andy's journey right now. And, uh, and where they're kind of lead and give them the light for 24 pages uh, because the last few itch- issues, it's been Andy and Miller's story has been told with like eight or nine pages mm-hmm. each, um, each issue. So now we're giving their story 24 pages to show you what's going on in the city and where their story is going to lead off at the end of the issue and all that stuff. So kind of letting that breathe and, and kind of soak in a little bit as you see the the differences in our story compared to other people's uh, stories in this genre as well. Mm-hmm. We have uh, J. Michael Miller. I uh, love the red uh, against the black and white. Yeah, the, I I love it too. I think it's such, it, it gives such like an important like visual like detail. It, uh, it we, brings your we, eye, yeah. Are we oh, allowed yeah, to uh, talk about issue two a little bit? Yeah, 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 that's fine. So I love the part where they're they're on the roof. And uh, they're looking yeah. out, and then they see it's just complete hell and chaos on the streets are breaking out. Like you said, uh, this is something that's happening. Like, they, they were, like, literally fighting for their life, get on the roof, and just see, like, holy crap. Like, this is everywhere. Like, yeah. um, what, I guess, uh, you know, causes this? I mean, uh, it felt like in the in the diner, um, the boyfriend kind of just, like, got it rather quickly. Yeah, so that that's another thing that we're going to kind of sprinkle throughout the issues and all that stuff of what's causing this. Because like I mentioned as well, like the infected in the world that we're showing is is also a character in itself. We want to mm-hmm. show that over the course of that development over the course of time, like we're like we're doing with these characters. Uh, but what I can say now is these infected people and the way they are getting infected is is different than other things that uh, people have seen in the genre in the past as well. So it, it definitely is exciting, you know, kind of being way back in the early stages of writing this, Alan and I, when we kind of came up with this, it was it was exciting to kind of see where we got with it and how real we could make this because obviously this uh avalon is based off realism that's kind of like our our Mm -hmm. thing with this is trying to keep it as grounded as possible so we we found a good way to making the infected people as real feel as real as it could in in this kind of setting and just kind of being in a storytelling element um but but it it is definitely an interesting thing It it took us a while to figure out how we wanted to do it what we wanted to do but there's a lot of different elements that you will learn and issues to come on why this is a different infection and why, why it does what it does as well no that is that that's awesome and uh, before we switch over to the kickstarter completely you've mentioned a couple times uh arcs uh how many issues are you looking at for this series um so uh, i've said this in the past as well a lot one thing i've really learned in the early stages because this is very new to us you know we're really new to this whole kind of storytelling mm-hmm. element and all that stuff but when we got that first uh, draft of issue one done uh, we were going to produce it and right away, as soon as we started, we were just not happy with it. We're like, okay, this, this isn't done. This is done right. It took us about <laughs> three drafts to figure it out. What The, the third draft you, is what you see on in physical form right now. What we did with that original first draft is we stretched that out for like four issues. Uh, and, and that alone was an experience for me uh, being new into this is we could stretch out a lot of these things and really tell a lot of story. And instead of condensing it so much, we could tell a mm-hmm. lot and let people develop a lot and all that stuff and focus on different aspects of all this but uh that was a longer answer to your thing but we we have a lot of arcs planned in the future you know right out of, off the top of my head right now i have a, a good four or five story arcs uh, uh to be told but this is gonna obviously what i found out as well the more you tell the more ideas that come uh come to light and all that stuff so there's a lot more story to be told this is going to be ongoing until i basically run out of ideas 
Oh, let's go. Let's go. So I think right with that being said, let's go ahead and switch over to our campaign screen and uh, check out the Kickstarter. So uh, is this happening like around Christmas uh, in the story? Yeah. So this story is, is like is like a week after Thanksgiving. So it's in, right in the mix of all the December and getting ready for the holidays and all that stuff. So obviously, like you could tell, this issue is called Last Christmas. So mm -hmm. uh, just and I'm a big Christmas guy in itself. So I had to find some kind of way to implement this into the story. Um, but it, it definitely we wanted to utilize Erie's weather because where, where I'm from and where this takes place is in Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie's weather is so 50 degrees, it's it's a blizzard for two days. Then it goes back up to 40 degrees and then the snow melts and then- That's right around again. what, Lake yeah, Erie? So, yeah, right, right yeah, underneath I'm, Lake I'm, Erie there. I'm a Lake Erie area too. I'm surprised so, we, like, we're gonna have we're gonna have to meet up at a con sometime. Hell yeah, that, that would be fun, yeah. I, uh, we're right, we went to the Erie Comic Con uh, this September, which was actually really, a really big success for us as well. It was real fun to kind of be there. It was a big event and all that stuff, but we should definitely link up at a con. Yeah. Col uh, uh, Columbus is doing uh, a, a con. Um, I, I'm up, I'm up by the Columbus area, kind of like more towards the Sandusky, like up by the, up by the lake. Oh, okay. I see, I see what you're saying. Cause yeah, I ended up driving past there when I was going on my honeymoon uh, earlier this year, but that I, I haven't been to Columbus. Oh, I actually have been to Columbus to, to the zoo. Uh, mm -hmm. But I've never really stayed there other than that. But uh, it's definitely a nice like <laughs> city area out going driving past that and all that stuff. But I did see that they're having a con coming up as well. Um, I, I actually I think I did. That was one of the people I did email because I want to really try and s spread out as much as we can this upcoming year. Yeah, the worst part is I'm trying to hit up cons, but like it's 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 like. I, I need to come up with like a schedule and, and like you, you don't know about the cons until they announce them. And it's like, well, that makes it hard. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely is like a, a weird thing that I'm trying to figure out myself. Like, and then by the time you get them, they're like, okay, all the vending spots are full. And it's just like, it, it's something that I have to figure out and figure out a good way of trying mm -hmm. to kind of get our foot in the door with a lot of these bigger cons still. So right here is the link for everyone watching. We are looking at Avalon issue three last Christmas. This is it. Issue three is here and coming your way. You don't want to miss out on the exciting action packed continuation of Avalon currently at $549 of a $800 goal with 15 backers and 15 days left to go. Congratulations. though. you are right on the cusp of it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're moving along here. You know, every, every help, every pledge helps us and kind of moving this forward and all that stuff. Uh, one of the things that we're really focusing on with this issue kicks this issue three kickstarter is the exclusive kind of material rather than mm -hmm. kind of doing what we did with the last two kickstarters where it's just like trying to get it out there trying to get the name out there trying to show people what we got you know at this point issue three is out we're kind of giving a nice briefing of what we got uh with avalon but if you're a big collector you're a big you know exclusive person uh, with comic books, this this would be a good one for you because we got a lot of good stuff that it, that's staying exclusive to the Kickstarter and mm -hmm. uh, live events. We're really not going to be selling a lot of this stuff after um, this Kickstarter is concluded. So it looks like we're hitting the writing side of things uh, in issue three. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things too where you're going to see a lot of change. You're going to see a lot of change with issue three than compared to the last two issues as well. I love this little Easter egg to Erie's uh, finest. <laughs> finest, yep. Yeah, uh, that was the artist who kind of wanted to put that in there as well. That wasn't even you know me telling him what uh, that that I wanted that he he kind of put that upon himself to kind of show that it was it was a fun little. You thing. know what? Uh, being so close, you'd probably would. Uh, this would might be something that you, you would uh, remember. But you remember Lake Erie like literally like 15 years ago? You could swim there and it wasn't green. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like a, like a yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mutant like toxic uh, sludge. Like, what's going on there? I remember, I used to to fish uh, for perch uh, out on the lake all the time, dude. And I don't think I would fish there anymore, though. No, yeah. It it definitely has been one of those things where it's like, what? I don't even know what happened. I don't know where it went wrong and all that stuff. But it definitely was a fun place to go, and you know, you could enjoy it and didn't like have that smell anymore. Now it's just like kind of like, <laughs> you know. <what> I mean? <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know we're right on, right on the end. Dude, you're right. When it hits winter, my girlfriend was from California. She was, and I had to tell her, like, you got to get used to it. Like, it's going to be rough. She's like, okay, whatever. I'm like, all right. Uh, and it's whatever, as soon yeah. as that lake effect hits you, dude, it's a different type of bone chill. It's funny because I had somebody ask me that's not from the area. They're like, what, what, like, what's the difference between lake effect and just like random, you know, a blizzard or whatever? I'm like, honestly, I don't know the exact definition. I just know when you hear lake effect, something's coming for you. You know, you're, you're really getting hit with something hard there. 
So with uh with issue three, I mean, with these comics, is your goal to like make people just die in the most savage way possible? Like, um, it, like it, like the the deeper we scroll, like this dude's face is completely covered. I mean, he's bleeding so bad, he's bleeding onto the panels. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of this though too, which is it's just really showing and making it just trying to illustrate crazy because it because these infected people are crazy you know that mm -hmm. they have all the functionality as a normal human being would and all that stuff so that's that's a nice little you know thing for people to understand going forward uh are infected too they have every functionality that a normal human being they're not gonna be super speed super slow it's just a normal human if they have normal uh, ability you know you know all that stuff normal human stuff um so but really just trying to show the chaos and the craziness of these of these infected people and one thing that we want to make sure that people know going forward is no character has plot armor. No character is going to have something that's going to keep them safe for story to be told. If the uh, the world that we create ends up killing a certain character off because that's just what happens in this world, uh, mm -hmm. then so be it. That's going to have to be the, the problem that we're going to have to deal with in going forward. So no character safe. Uh, I know a lot of shows or a lot of things in the past have said similar things, but this and with Avalon, we're we're going to be showing quickly that we mean that so i mean are you allowed to talk about how the infection like passes it looks like his partner has been wounded for at least you know a full comic now so i mean it, it, he he might be in the clear it feels so so what you're going to see though too is with with the next uh with the last few issues and seeing what we got here as well as and, and one thing that i'll mention before i even say what i said that this these first three four issues is in the span of just a few hours you know mm -hmm. so here this isn't this or not even really a few hours maybe like an hour or two you know so this is happening quick and this is happening in a, to a point where it's like okay so i know it's kind of hard to, to to show or depict what what the time frame is with this whole thing but you'll see what happens to miller after his you know his hand is coming up you, you'll actually see what's going on here very shortly He's, um, he's but, like, funny you should say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we're showing this, you know, kind of dragging it out. But obviously, as well, and what, what's funny with Miller's character as well is I've had actually a lot of people tell me they like his character and the way he talks and all that stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens with Miller. And then so we have some of the rewards right here. So um, this is a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, most of these packages are going to be Kickstarter exclusive. So uh really awesome uh right here is this uh this uh the, so this is the standard cover right here cover a yep. for uh, last christmas yep that'll be the standard cover that anybody's gonna be able to buy after the fact uh you also can buy it on the kickstarter as well but that's just gonna be our standard cover going forward we do have a catch-up tier that you are able to uh purchase all three issue standard covers uh so if you want to, if this looks interesting to you and you wanted to grab all three of them just to see what we're about as there's a there's a tier in there for that cover b um, looks like it has a little bit of a a, a little bit of a, a nod on uh, what could be happening with this character yeah uh a lot this whole thing was uh Demetrius's idea you know he had this idea that he wanted to do and i i told him to go for it and that's what he kind of came up with and i and that's probably one of my favorite characters or not characters uh covers that i've seen so far that he's done it, it's very dramatic it's very you know telling and all that stuff and this is brutal too so you have them yeah. in the christmas ornaments and then we have a skull hanging right there oh man I, I i this this couldn't be any more on the nose too with with uh his uh, ornament in the mouth i love that yeah. i love i love this type of like foreshadowing like this is awesome yeah that that's a nice one and i i i needed this to be done obviously because of the title uh very christmas uh, looking cover this mm -hmm. one is only going to be bought you can only buy this cover on the kickstarter if you're if you like the cover or maybe if you think you'll like it or think somebody will like it i suggest grab it because we're never going to be able to sell that we're never selling that one again this one's only being purchased on the kickstarter and that one is one of my favorites as well just kind of you know a nice thing to put up for the christmas time right and then we have uh <laughs> the old saint nick pin as well yep that that's a fun one that he, that he kind of came to life real good there i, I like that one so let's go ahead and look at some of the tiers too. We have uh, at 11 bucks or more the uh, exclusive cover, so you can get cover C to issue three for uh, just 11 bucks. At 12, you have the PDF catch up, so you can get issue one, two, and three for the PDF. And then at 15, we have the PDF zombie bundle. So give us a little bit about this bundle. So the zombie bundle there is obviously uh, we have Avalon, Path of the Pale Rider, and Ray. So obviously we have our we're our kind of small little community that we've kind of gathered after we all went public with our projects. 
And uh, it's a fun thing that w- each one of us have been doing with our Kickstarters is, is giving the opportunity, if you're a zombie fan, to get issue one of the PDF versions of all three of those comics. So if you're just a big fan of the z- genre uh, and you wanted to give things a, a chance or a try and see what we're about, then it's a nice, easy thing to do to kind of get all three of them. And I, I love how each one's a little bit different too, uh, it, in terms of yeah. like the zombie and the infection and everything. Um, and it, I've had all three of you guys on the show. I've had all three of you on the show twice. Uh, so what are the odds of that? You know, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I, it's just re- you're really trying to help us out and get the genre out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> At fifteen, we have the physical catch up, so that is an awesome price. Five bucks a book, like holy crap, Brandon. Yeah, trying to get all these things. And like I said, if, if that's somebody, something that you, this looks interesting, the artwork looks interesting and all that stuff, because that's what you're seeing. Just 15 bucks to see what we're about. See if this is something that you want to invest in in the future. Uh, 15 bucks for three comics just to see what we're going to I think three comics is definitely a good uh, number of comics to kind of see what this is about and mm-hmm. really tells the, the difference that we have in this series going forward with other things or comparing to other things in the past. And then you can get a uh, cover B, cover C bundled for 22. We have the exclusive bundle 1.0 at 50. So this will be the uh, Kickstarter exclusive only with a a uh, exclusive castle uh, Christmas card and an exclusive pin as well. So that's going to be the Saint Nick uh, pin. Yep. Yep. Cool. And that last uh, the 2.01, one, if you're getting all those things with an t- with a T-shirt as well, uh, the T-shirt's going to be of the inking stage of the cover C. Um, oh, that's awesome. Cover. So we're really going to put that and illustrate that as much as we can. And uh, you'll get a a couple other like knickknack things like from other events and holidays that we've had extra things of kind of thrown in your box as well. Uh, Along with that Santa Claus as well, the the angry infected Santa. So, hey, did you see, um, what is it? What movie is it going to be? Violent Night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that looks looks, so good, dude. Oh, my God. I'm about it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for that movie. That comes out, what, in a week or two weeks here? Mm-hmm. I think. It's, it's coming close. I cannot wait for that. When I saw that originally, I was like, awesome. Uh, David Harbour, amazing actor. And for him to be Santa Claus and have them do it in that kind of way, I'm excited to see that. So after going through your Kickstarter, what would you say to anyone who might be on the fence about backing if you had just a few moments to kind of talk to them directly? You know, just just give us a shot. You know, I know there's a lot of things, uh, especially in the Kickstarter world, that there's a lot of projects and a lot of things to kind of donate to or, or really invest in. If it, a lot, so it's really just looking and seeing what we're about. And the artwork speaks for itself in, in a lot of ways. Demetrius does a phenomenal job with the, the black, uh, white, and the blood and the color, everything. Mm-hmm. You know, everything visually he does very well. And uh, just if that alone right there kind of piques your interest and then just to kind of reassure the story as well we want to tell the story in such a different way that it's been told in the genre uh so many different times we want to really try to keep this grounded in reality and uh there's a lot of story to be told with avalon there's a lot of characters to fall in love with there's a lot of characters that you're going to want to hate as well that we have coming (laughs) up here as well so it's just there's a lot of good things going you know if you're a fan of the genre it's definitely worth a shot you know me looking at it not as a creator, as just a fan of the genre and kind of really looking at how the artist illustrates that all the stuff on script to paper of just that alone is just exciting to me as being just a fan, you know, the blood, the gore, the suspense and the thriller. There's a lot of elements in Avalon that we're going to be uh, touching on with all that. The, you, noir is a big one that's going to be coming up and in uh, and, and an arc or two. So really, really suspenseful. We're, we're really excited with what we've got. No, that is awesome. And everyone watching right there is the link once again. Be sure to check it out. If you're unable to back it, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, anywhere you can. Word of mouth is 100% free and getting that reach as far as possible is what we're trying to do today. So, Brandon, after, you know, having this awesome sit down, once again, breaking down Avalon, um, we've come to one of my favorite parts of the show. And that's where I get to ask you for a little bit of advice for anyone who might be new watching. So that being said, for anyone who is watching and let's say they're they're having trouble adding a spice of a little bit of variety to the writing you know just trying to break the mold a little bit what type of advice would you offer them to kind of help them uh do that to kind of reach that creative uh stride uh, within the writing you know a lot of people a lot of actually celebrity or big time writers say this a lot as well uh it's just try to keep it as true to you as possible because you're everybody's different you know everybody mm-hmm. goes through different experiences <clears throat> try to stay true to what you know and don't if this is something new that you're trying or you're stuck or something, I found it easiest for us, for me at least, 
to kind of stay to what you know and don't try to make anything outlandish or if, if you're not comfortable in the area. Like for us, it, for instance, we're from Erie. We know Erie. Mm-hmm. It's set in Erie. Uh, a lot of these conversations in the book that we kind of write out, a lot of these relationships in the book is a lot of things that I've dealt with in my life and all that stuff. So kind of just illustrating in that way. So just the, the easiest advice I can give anybody who's stuck on something is just kind of keeping it as true to you as possible if you feel stuck in any way. And then it, it'll just naturally kind of unfold and move forward from that. No, that's good. That's awesome. Thank you so much once again, Brandon. Yes. This has been an awesome chat. Everyone watching right here is the link. Once again, be sure to check it out. Uh, it is a beautiful Saturday. So make it even more lovely by backing this book today. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much for swinging by and hanging out with us. Everyone watching, I hope you have a lovely day. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.